This square wave fed voltage doubler, it's really an amplifier. In fact, it's an amplifier stage, it's modular. And like amplifiers and filters, they can frequently be stacked multiple stages in a row, or in other fancy ways. In this case, you can increase your voltage as much as your parts can handle. You can literally go forever as much as your parts can handle and just keep bringing it up and up and up and up. I will assume you've watched the previous videos on this topic so I don't go over the entire thing again. We're using the 5 volt power supply like before, using the same square wave generator configuration, and we're using the same push-pull PNP and NPN transistor pair so that the transistors are driving the power being drawn by everything downstream and the timer chip is only generating the actual square wave and thus you could plug any square wave source no matter how weak into those two transistors. So here's the voltage doubler stage made up of two diodes and two capacitors fed by the square wave. So we have our 5 volt supply and the square wave is 0 volts and 5 volts. At the beginning the square wave is low so the capacitor charges to the supply and the supply feeds 5 volts to the load and charges this capacitor. And then of course diode drops but let's keep it simple. That doesn't change how it works, that changes the maximum voltage. When the square wave goes high to 5 volts, the capacitor has 5 volts here and the capacitor was charged with 5 volts, 4.5, we'll just say, we'll just ignore the diode drops for this explanation. So 5 volts here and 5 volts here, and it was charged this way, so it discharges this way, so we have 10 volts going down. This diode protects the positive from being fed 10 volts. It puts 10 volts to the load and charges this capacitor to 10 volts. And then when the signal switches low again, it recharges this capacitor to 5 volts while this capacitor continues to discharge the 10 volts it had through the load and that's how the doubling works. So we have a load here, but what we really have is an output voltage. What if instead of a load, or as a load, we have another one of these? So this goes into there of the next stage. So instead of the supply voltage, we get the previous stage is 10 volts. It's not a separate EMF. We have not used a transformer to create a separate electromotive force, a power source, but it's still 10 volts. So the signal goes low to zero volts, which means the capacitor is charging to 10 volts. And now we have a new load. So we'll say the load's over there now. So this is stage two. So the capacitor charges to 10 volts and the load is being fed 10 volts and this capacitor is being charged to 10 volts. Then the capacitor has 10 volts on it. The square wave goes up to 5 volts. Those two combined push 15 volts, not counting diode drops, push 15 volts, the diode protects, puts 15 volts to the load, charges this capacitor to 15 volts, then the signal goes low, recharges this capacitor to 10 volts, while this capacitor discharges its 15 volts to the load, or the next stage of the doubler. That's it. That's how you stack them and get as high a voltage as you want. The more you stack them, of course, the less the load you can drive. But you can compensate by making bigger capacitors. When I first plug in my six-stage amplifier over here that I'm about to show you, it takes a good few seconds before the voltage actually rises because it's charging so many capacitors through so many stages. But as long as your load is under control, then it will be able to keep up just fine because all the capacitors just end up being topped off moment by moment. Here's another fun thing. I'm using the same timer, the same square wave. So I've got one timer chip, a PNP and an NPN with the two base resistors. They are feeding every single stage because only the five volts is being added each time. The load, the output of the capacitor is providing the next stage's supply. So you don't need a timer stage or anything for every single amplifier stage. All you need is two more diodes and two more capacitors. That's it. Fun fact, the AC version of this, there's a fancy name for it. I'll go over it in some future video when I get into the AC versions. I'm leaving that for now. I'll stick to DC. But there's a fancy one. If you look at the picture, it's got like capacitors in lines and it's just like diode, 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 diode. And that one uses the same thing, two diodes and two capacitors per doubling. So it's not even more parts. It's not even more parts than the AC version. So let me show you. So we've got our five volt supply and I actually have five stages, not six. I was thinking of the fact that the, the first voltage is five. So I've got five stages that are each adding five volts for a total of 30 volts. 
Not actually because of the diodes and a few other losses. But we would expect 30 volts from this. So let me go ahead and plug in just my oscilloscope. The divisions are at 8.2 volts and it's about three divisions. So that's about 24.6 volts, very roughly because this is just a visual measurement. It's not particularly accurate, but there you go. About 24.6 when we expect 30 through all of these diodes. Each one of my diodes has about 0.5 or 0.54 volts drop times 10 is about 5 volts. So it's actually dropping not quite as much as it should be. It's right about on there. But I guess when each diode has been warmed up a little bit when it's running, it conducts a little better. So it's slightly under 0.5. But if I plug in my multimeter, 25.2. So actually, just like I said, it's doing about 25 or a hair under because the diodes have warmed up and they don't have quite the same drop anymore. See, so yeah, now it's down to 24.8 because it's driving a bit of a load. But it's settled. It's nice and stable. You're not really going to see noise because of the scale. This is 24 volts, so if you had one volt of noise, it's not really going to show up. But, you know, it looks reasonably good. You can see some wiggle. Here, I'll pause it. Barely any. And remember, you can always add more capacitors. And just to show you, each stage, so this is my original 5 volt supply. After stage 1, it goes to about 8.9. Stage 2 goes to about 12.9. Stage 3 ends up at about 16.9. Stage 4 is reading about 21. And then stage 5 or 6, whichever you prefer, because I guess the original is stage 0. We get about 24.8 once it settles with the 1 mega ohm load. What about a different load? Let me use a potentiometer to see what this can drive. So let's say I want to get 20 volts out of this. I want to drive whatever load I can drive at 20 volts. So let's bring it on down. So right there is just about 20 volts. There's still not really any appreciable noise. I have to zoom in. Let's see if I can zoom in. Actually, if I auto scale, maybe it'll see a signal. Not really. There's not even enough variation. Oh, there it is. There's the noise. So I'm having to zoom in like crazy just to see this noise. So the scale is about 200 millivolts. And it's kind of in between. Let me scale. There. I've got it in between two lines. This is, again, a very rough visual measurement. But the divisions right now are about 150 millivolts, 0.15 volts. So this is 0.15 volts peak-to-peak -peak noise due to the charging and discharging with only 100 microfarad capacitors throughout the whole thing. So let's bring this back down. So 20 volts. Not bad. So now let me look how big this potentiometer was set at. Right about on 7k ohms. 20 volts, 7k ohms. What was the current? So it's settling, we'll say 27, we'll say 26. Minus the 10 idle is 16. So 20 volts, 7k ohms, about 16 milliamps. That's pretty good. 16 milliamps is a lot. It's more than the timer chip. And an op amp is not going to be drawing that kind of current. My op amps don't even draw current that this thing will display. Not when you're powering them. So you could power a 0 to 20 volt op amp with this. And actually, it'll be more. It'll be more like the 25 because the op amp is going to draw so little current. And you'll even go higher than 25 if you use different diodes. So now I'm going to unplug everything except my oscilloscope and turn off the power. And you can see it not going down because there's a lot of energy in here. There's actually beginning to be a dangerous amount of energy in here. Enough to give you a little bit of a spark anyway. Plug in the multimeter and you can see it going very slowly down. Now let's plug in that load, that's 7k ohms. Oh, and it goes down precipitously, but it's an RC network after all, and it's slowing and slowing, and it's still got three volts in there. Remember, capacitors are dangerous. Always make sure they're drained if you're messing with high voltage. There, we're finally down to half a volt. Well, that does it for the positive rail. How about the negative rail? That's coming up next. For now, I'll be seeing you.